I am working on a series of black and white still life images that are based on the statements from a psychological screening test that the Turkish military uses on gay men wishing to be exempt from the compulsory military service. As a Turkish gay man myself, this is a very important and personal project. Every man in Turkey over the age of 20 is required by law to participate in the compulsory military service. There are very few cases where someone might be exempt from this, and this includes uh, chronic illnesses. Even though homosexuality was decriminalized in the Ottoman rule in 1800s, the military classifies homosexuality as a psychosexual disorder. To be exempt from the service, you have to declare and evidence your sexuality. And for the army to accept your homosexuality, the applicant has to perform in a way that coincides with their understanding of what it is to be a gay man. This is problematic because it requires men to act in a specific manner for the military, for them to accept their otherness or their queerness as based on their understanding of what it is to be a gay man. The work focuses on the identity of gay men in contemporary Turkey and how they perform for an institution to get out of conscription. But I think a lot of people can relate to the work, especially those that are outside the heteronormative matrix. No one expects anyone to prove their sexuality, especially not straight men. They don't have to perform or evidence their heterosexuality, so why should gay men in Turkey do? I had an access to one of the psychological tests that the military uses on gay men wishing to be exempt. This test comprised of 567 statements that are answered with yes or no. What I've done with these statements is construct a still life photograph, but adding some sort of a gestural or performative element to it. For instance, breaking plates or spraying ink on toilet paper. What I like about photography as a medium is the link between my objects, things that exist in the real world, and the subject, the narrative that I construct using these objects. The link between these two, are, I find it quite fascinating because it's really dependent on the audience and it's very fluid and working with this fluidity is quite exciting. And basically this is a military um, exemption form that he presented in the, in the gallery space in Istanbul Modern. And here you can see um, his photograph, um, his details, his ID number. And here is the um, psychological evaluation. So it uh, refers to how he, how, on his appearance, how well kempt he is, how he speaks, how he moves and talks about the contents of the speech. So um, it says that he had exclusive homosexual relationships since the age of 18, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, some details about the conversation that they had. I could be in the same situation. I may choose to go through that uh, humiliating experience as well. So that's why I'm really interested. The evidence of my sexual misdemeanor is an ongoing project. And I started working on it uh, with my master's degree, which is still ongoing, even though it's all distance learning. But in theory, we're going to have a physical degree show this summer. Although this is still a big question, let's see, but there will definitely be a virtual degree show and that will be um, a good opportunity to showcase my work. This speci uh, specific um, series, but this series actually fits into a bigger body of work that's also um, happening in the background. Um, I have very few pieces for that, but um, evidence of my sexual misdemeanor is the biggest chunk of the work, let's say. To the ideal viewer, I don't really think there is an ideal viewer. It's um, because it's quite a political piece as well as being quite personal. So I want it to be seen as many people as possible, ideally. But realistically, um, when you have a show, you still want to sell pieces because you know you have to make money. Although I, you can't really rely um, on art, like m making art to get money. There are lots of different avenues within the art world that you can get almost stable or relatively stable, or let's say unstable realistically, income. One of my ways around uh, trying to talk about these more difficult subjects is trying to be more um, stronger with my aesthetic because that way it leads people into looking at it and if they want to discuss about the seriousness of it they are more than welcome to do it in fact I want them to but I can't really force down political issues down people's throats. I'm with the idea of being white but not really 
So I always put it's other white. It's like the other in the art world and within history, it's always less. It's always because it's a marginalized group. So I'm white, but I'm still marginalized in that kind of sense. So whenever they say other whites and then in brackets, please describe, it's kind of describing your otherness or how you're different from this uh, majority strong whiteness. And I kind of have fun with that free uh, text bit. So I just say something like, um, in the winter, I have like khaki green skin tones, but in the summer, I'm more like terracotta and basically trying to be a little bit more sassy. And I didn't want to make anyone in a BAME group angry by why is this white guy talking about being BAME because he doesn't look like it or what kind of experience does he have? But um, that's the thing about being BAME. It's about the inclusivity and I'm not, I'm other white. So the perfectionist nature does come in because I'm trying to make this thing that people can approach and and then I can actually talk about something that's more serious. 